This is the first video of a series on attacking domain controllers based on the work done by the Bright Mutas. The important thing in here are the restrictions we're going to put on these attacks to make them more difficult. First of all, no Sysmon. You know I'm a big fan of Sysmon, but in this particular case, for X, Y, and reasons, we are not going to use them. In fact, I had installed Windows, I have installed Sysmon on the machine that we are going to be attacking the domain controller and I removed it in order to make sure that we don't get uh, Sysmon locks. Just plain Windows locks, not Sysmon. Okay? The other restriction is that we are not going to be using any EDR technologies like Carbon Black, uh, CrowdStrike, FireEye, any one of those technologies we are not going to use any of that. It's again just plain Windows locks. We will also be alongside showing in this series of videos what Microsoft Advanced Threat Analytics technology can and cannot detect. So we start with this domain controller. The name is External Web Server. That's the address that ends in 130. Now what we will do is that we will start the attack by executing a piece of malware that we created called mylaw.exe and I'm going to run that as an admin. In other videos I have shown how you can escalate privileges but just to keep this short I'm going to run it just uh, already uh, as an admin. This piece of malware was created using a metropreter type of tool called MFS, MFS Phenom. And the idea of uh, creating our own attack is to make sure that there's no threat intel information. You cannot find any intelligent source telling you anything about this because this was created specifically for a target of choice. So we don't want any threat intel available. Uh, you, if you want more information on how this is actually created. You can watch in the video description. There is a link in the second page of it. There is a PDF. If you search in it for MSS Vino, you will find the video that shows you how you can create this type of attack. But the idea once uh, this mylove.exe is executed, again in this particular case to say time as an admin, it's going to create a session with the attacker machine, which is a Kali system, whose address ends in 124. And the objective of that session will be to create what is called a, a golden ticket. We are going to do that at, by getting the TGT KBT, uh, uh, TGT Kerberos account uh, hash. More on that with the actual attack. Here's our curator system. We clear all the offenses. Here's the domain controller, 2012R2. Again, we tested it with the, uh, 2019, same thing. And we have here the Microsoft Advanced Threat Analytics, you know, clean as a whistle in, in curator. So let's actually start the attack. So we already have the mylove.exe downloaded here into the machine and I'm going to run it as an admin uh, and that's going to create a session with the Kali system. This is the one that ends in 124 and so when we actually do that and don't get hung up on you know nobody runs executables on the domain controller and how do you get to download that. Let's, let's uh, multiple mechanism for that but let's I'm showing you this kind of protection against the golden ticket, which is a very pernicious one. So we got a session opening here. So let's go into that session, and we do that by doing session interactively one. That's the only session that we have. And the first thing that we're going to do is get system privileges by issuing the get system command. Okay. Now, with that privilege es escalated already, if we run this command, that's going to get us the 
this set of hashes. The one that we are going to be using or actually abusing in this particular case is the hash for the Kerberos ticket granted ticket, the one that begins in C52 and ends in A90. So I'm going to put this in the clipboard, keep this in mind because we're going to be using this later. So you'll see how valuable is that simple hash and what type of attacks it enables us to do. Let's actually go into the clean curator system and see what it was able to detect. I should think we have an offense in here. Let's actually investigate it. And I can explain you why what this address 69 uh, is all about. Let's actually open the actual event the actual offense and we have three events but before showing the events let's actually display the rules that fire in here so we have three windows event logs and two rules that had fire actually the most important one is this one the, the, but let's actually see both of them all you need is just one to get you invited to investigate this but here we can see that this is a standard uh, Windows logs and we can see that it detect that run of the PowerShell command which is part of the particular attack. The other rule is in my view the key one that detects the privilege escalation. You can see the logic that Mutas puts in the in the actual rule in here. If we look at the three events that we got, again these are standard Windows logs, we can even take a look at this one and notice that the domain that we're using, the, the, the machine is called externalwebserver.microsoft.windows.test.com and that 69 address is the address of the domain test.com, that's where that uh, comes from. Let's actually go to ATA and see what ATA can detect. And as you can see, ATA, great technology, don't get me wrong, but it, it is it will miss this specific type of attack. Now, what can we do with that information? So we're going to compromise a machine that is a Windows machine, fully patched again, that is member of that domain and we're going to run the very same executable that is going to create us a session with Kali but what we're going to be doing after that is use that ticket with some commands all of that is going to be shown to you that will enable us to create a golden ticket that will enable us to get access to the entire thing that it belongs to that domain and this attack is good you're going to see that the ticket that we get is good for 10 years and unless some people in the administration changes the this account the Kerberos TGT which is not when you look into the users of the admin system you don't see it there's a you can google this Microsoft has a procedure and they actually recommend you to change this periodically but uh, if you don't do that then anyone is going to be able to get uh, on with this type of attack access to all the resources in the domain let's actually proceed with the attack but before doing that I'm going to clear all offenses in curator let's actually close the Kali session that we have with the domain controller and start a new one And you may, pr it may probably actually reconnect with the session. You see, there's another session that gets uh, actually created with the domain controller because of the mylove.exe running, but we are, we are not going to use that one. Uh, let's actually. Oh, I'm here in the Windows AD, the Windows 7 that is fully patched and member of, the, of that domain controller, and we are going to be running as we did before we don't even need uh, privileges uh, admin privileges that we can just run the mylove.exe here and we get a second session created with that's the machine that ends in 2.0 
205. If we go interactively into it, that's the second session. Again, the first one is with the domain controller. And we get a shell. And we try to go to any resource. I'm going to point to a resource in this particular domain controller. I want to see the listing uh, in here. So if I paste this uh, dir command in here, which points to the domain controller, which is external web server, give me everything that is on the C drive, you get an access denied. And that's the way Active Directory works, protecting people. I mean, if you want to get there, you need to have the right access to it. Let's exit the shell. Let's actually load Kiwi. What's the meterpreter? other nice tool and let me paste this particular command in here so this actually created the golden ticket but let me and, and it's been put on the slash root my golden ticket or tkt but let me explain the command a bit this is the metapreter command it's actually golden ticket create this is the domain of the machine. We show you Microsoft the Windows or test.com. The user I'm using is, is JRabbit. I don't want to use admin to make sure that they don't see anything happening with admin because they may be following that. And then there are two parts that are important here. This, the slash K, is precisely the powerful hash that we got in the first part of this attack. And this thing that begins in S15 and ends in 04 can easily be gotten by going into the shell and put who am I slash user. And we get that part, except for the dash 111. We don't need this is the, the other part. So this, I have shown you how you get the two pieces and that has just created the token, the ticket grant, the ticket that we wanted. Now we need to use it. Exit the shell. Let me paste the command. Actually, didn't put it in the clipboard. This is going to use that golden ticket. And now, notice what happens if I go back to a shell and I ask the same dear command that we used before. We pasted it in here. That's different. Now we got access to that that drive into the machine. And the reason we have been able to do that is because if we do the klist command, we see the tickets that we got and we see that we got a golden ticket that is good until 2029. We have 10 more years to do this attack. And again, on, unless people change, they can change the domain controller password, that doesn't make any difference. You need to change the the Kerberos TGT account in order to render this hash uh, invalid. And by the way, Mutas also created rules that can detect if somebody is trying to use an already expired hash as well, because that is suspicious. And we got two offenses. Let's detect, let's actually take a look at this one, which is the more telling one. If we open that up. Let's start by displaying the actual rule that contributed to this particular case. And this is that beautiful logic that enabled us to detect that. Notice that is a Windows logs and gets a authentication success. And it noticed that the the because I use the J Bravo one ID, there is a mismatch, and that's a that's a sign that somebody is using a forged uh, Kerberos ticket. Now the rule is uh, one of the by the way is one of the Sysmon rule, but does not require Sysmon logs. That Mutas uh, also created that exec the says that you know somebody's doing who am I slash user that's kind of unusual why is anybody doing that and, and it also detected that let's actually go to ATA and see what ATA 
was able to detect if we go to the domain controller we see that ATA misses these two types of attacks. We're going to be doing in this series more of these attacks and, and you'll see that ATA catches uh, I mean don't take this as a criticism against ATA it's just that it's not designed to detect this type of attack it's more designed to detect all the type of attacks uh, from the networking uh, perspective and again a very useful technology but it misses uh, these two. Well I hope I have proven to you that uh, these uh, rules might be something you may want to add to your system in order to detect uh, this extremely nasty and powerful golden ticket attack and thanks Mutas for making this available